Now, this is the first piece where I'm not going to talk about the actual physical chip itself and what actually happens to the chip. This is actually done in software. Uh, wear leveling, whether it be software or firmware or a driver or something of that nature, wear leveling is a mechanism that they came up with because over time they know that the flash chips themselves will die. That physically each cell has a certain maximum number of writes and that it's going to die. So in order to increase the maximum number of writes, rather than having one particular location, let's say you formatted it and you put a FAT32 table on there, and the FAT32 table, I mean, every time that you make a change to it, it's going to change. So rather than trying to erase that block and then put it back down again and reuse 100,000 writes on that, it would eat it up pretty fast. I don't know if you guys remember, like in the old days, do you guys remember when they said, oh, well, these things are only going to last like 18 days? Anybody remember that? Yeah, there was a few reports of them only going to last 18 days. And so this wear leveling scheme is the scheme that they came up with. And it's either software or firmware or something else. Now, what I want you to notice is that initially when it starts out, you'll see that, like it says, 1,400 right now for the file. Within five digits of a write to the rest of the blocks, it will pick the file up from an unchanged location and move it to a new location automatically, without you knowing anything or doing anything. It picks up the file that's sitting in an unchanged location because the count is too low and everything else has incremented by more than one in order to try to make everybody use the same number of erase cycles. So I'll try to get into that now so you kind of have a little bit better idea. On a hard drive, if you want to write to a particular sector, you can. You can control the hard drive. If I want to read from it, if, I, if I'm doing forensics and I want to read from a particular sector, I can just say, let's go there, look at that sector, and let's do something with it. And if I want to change it, I can change it. I can edit it in place. So when I modify that text file, I have the ability, maybe, to write it back to where it came from. That doesn't mean it happens every time, because I know like Word files make a temp file, and then there's another file, and things are changed along the way. But you have the ability to control that. You can write to that sector, and it can go back to that location. But since we're dealing with an SSD drive, that's not true. You cannot write anything back to a sector that's been written to till you erase the entire block. So if I have a file and I'm making a modification to it, I can't save it back where it was. I have to save it to a new location. And then the system will tell it to put this into a erase block cycle. And as soon as it can do its garbage collection routine and it runs through the entire disk, it will erase that particular location. The other thing that happens too is I understand that once something is added to the table to line it up for erasure, that if you pulled the power on it and you came back later and you plugged it back in, it picks up where it was last left off. Even if there's a new command that says erase this block, that command doesn't take place at that time. It's queued and the garbage collection routine basically continues where it came from. Anybody see where this can be kind of useful in forensics if we could talk to that old location before it was erased. So, you know, there's like, you know, you erase your DOD memory stick and you put it up on eBay. Somebody buys it. Maybe you could get that file back. So there's a lot of things that might actually happen there. <clears throat> so write endurance is what it's called as the cell ages. So basically over time, as you've written to it, it will go bad. Now, they think that the reason that it goes bad is primarily because content from the electron gets stored in the oxide. I'm not sure they know 100% why it's completely destroyed, but over time, it gets destroyed. The reason for this is that you're putting content into silicon, and the silicon has had a dopant added to it. The dopant agent helps to store the charge for a longer period of time to actually store it in that cell and keep it there. It makes it more susceptible to storing that charge. So what you have to know now is that you, the content that's stored in there will gradually fade over time. The electrical charge will start to fade and it will not stay in there forever. Now I don't know that anybody knows the exact length of time it will stay in the cell. But if you're assuming that you could write content in there and maybe in 20 years come back and read that same USB memory stick, you're probably wrong. Now, if content was erased from it and you put content back there, it would continue, continually be usable through the cycle of while you're adding stuff and taking things away. But if it was never used and you just put it in the shelf, 
there's a chance that in 20 years we might not be able to read that. Uh, you know, kind of like the story we have with CD-ROMs and, you know, you're burning your own CD-ROM so it's actually made from a dye or an organic material and it's not going to last forever. You might actually have it die as well after 10 years or so. <clears throat> so, the question always comes up then, oh, you got something like, you know, Ready Boost, which is Vista specific at the moment for the five or six people that are using Vista uh, <clears throat> or whatever's left of those five after um, Service Pack 1 destroys your computer <coughs> and leaves it unbootable and you install XP again. Um, if you're using Ready Boost and you've bought this memory stick and you plug it into the back of your system and you're constantly making changes and it's going to constantly write to that thing because it's basically using it like a page file. So the story goes that if it was constantly reading and write to it, a 4 gig memory stick would last about three years. That's about how much time you would get as it constantly read and wrote. Now, the number is kind of gray, and it changes from manufacturer to manufacturer too, but this is kind of more of a marketing scheme of how many times you can write to that cycle before it actually dies. And people think it's 100,000. Some people say it's a million. Some people have various different definitions of what that means and how many times it can be written. But the real truth from some of the proprietary type information that I've read and gone through, and I've had a few people that are manufacturers and vendors that tell me that's nothing more than marketing, that that number really hasn't changed a lot over the years. But it may change in some of the new materials that they're starting to try to use to make these things faster. <clears throat> So this is a, a manufacturer's quote that I got, and I, you know, I typically don't have too many words in my slides, but I had to put this in here. When uh, flash memory wafers are tested and probed, a distribution of bad, weak, and strong dye are identified across the wafer. Bad cells are marked, and the remaining cells are sorted into consumer and industrial grade quality flash. Consumer grade flash makes it onto flash discs that are mass marketed through your retail outlet. Now, I just thought that was pretty funny. This is a, a manufacturer's quote I actually found on their website that's basically telling me we put the crap in the stuff that you get at Prize. And so if that makes you feel really good about trusting what's going on on that chip, uh, it, 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 it really bothers me sometimes. But, but anyway, <clears throat> so the content that I just went over, this is the basics of the breakdown of what we just talked about. Uh, so the whole point is, is that you have a single cell and the cell starts at a state of one and then you move to your byte and then your smallest writable unit is a sector. Now the numbers in parentheses there, they're just showing you that originally it was 512 and then you have 16 extra bytes of data that is stored there that are kind of like status flags. Things that tell you know, whether this is a bad block or what's changed on this block. Or if you're greater than 256 megs, you have two 048 bytes that are stored there plus 64 bytes and that's referred to as a page and again that's the smallest writable unit so you can keep writing to the sectors as long as nothing's been written there but once content's been written there you can't do anything until it's erased so your smallest erasable unit is a block and typically that's going to be 64 sectors and the erase is going to return it to a state of one so again that's going to be 128K basically that you're going to have to erase at any one time. Now you don't have control over that and you don't know where that block moved to. So you have no way of knowing how many are moved or, or where they sit for that matter. Now if you compare this to a hard drive, on a hard drive pretty much everything is 512 bytes. Your smallest writable unit is 512, your smallest erasable unit is 512, and your smallest bad block that you could possibly get on your hard drive is 512. And so, of course, on a hard drive, you also have some spare sectoring and some other things going on where if you have so many bad blocks, it can move that content to a reserved location, a reserved cylinder, or a reserved sector. But on NAND, you have a different story. So if your smallest writable unit is 512 or 2048, and then your smallest erasable unit is 128, then you have to imagine, too, that your biggest problem is going to be you can't erase a unit if anything goes bad. So if any cell in the entire block goes bad, the entire block is marked bad and not used again. So 128K is gone from your device. Gradually over time as that happens, some of them are already coming with some bad blocks on them already. But the chips themselves, when you buy, say, uh, a one gig memory stick, it may be a little larger than one gig. 
So it may have some extra sectors on it already. They do do some spare sectoring, 